For decades, gas supplies to Europe have been not only a source of super profits for the Kremlin, but also an instrument of political pressure. Since the beginning of Russia's full-scale war against Ukraine, Moscow has literally lost the European gas market. The EU has launched the Repower EU program, which will allow to completely get rid of Russian gas by 2027. In 2023, the share of Russian gas in Europe fell to 15 percent and continues to fall. Brussels is confident that it has enough reserves to enter the heating season without any problems. The continent's storage levels reached 90 percent of their capacity on August 19th, according to the latest data from industry group Gas Infrastructure Europe. That's more than two months ahead of the European Union's November 1st goal of reaching that level. For now, ample inventories are helping to offset supply risks, from a publication by Bloomberg Agency. On December the 31st, 2024, the contract under which Russia transits gas through Ukraine expires. This will make it impossible to supply fuel to Austria, Slovakia and Hungary. Moscow wanted to compensate for the loss of the European market by supplying to China. Since 2022, Putin has been actively lobbying for the construction of the power of Siberia 2 gas pipeline. But the parties have not reached a consensus. Beijing demanded that the gas price be reduced to the domestic Russian level, $60 per thousand cubic meters, and this is four times cheaper than what China already receives through the power of Siberia pipeline. When you lay a new pipeline, you would like the prices at which you supply the product to be more competitive. Today it's not like that in the case of relations between China and Russia. The second important point is the payment in yuan. They are unhappy with this and they are trying to force China to move to a different level of relations and still pay in another currency, in euros, in dollars. But in fact, they are not succeeding because they do not have a strong negotiating position and China can dictate terms to them. In parallel, Russia is trying to establish exports of liquefied natural gas. According to the Minister of Economic Development of the Russian Federation, in 2023 the country exported 33 million tons of fuel by sea. By 2027, Russia plans to increase supplies to 56 million tons. But here too, Moscow has to act in a pirate manner because of sanctions. In June 2024, the EU adopted the 14th sanctions package. Among other things, it contains a ban on the transshipment of liquefied for gas in European ports. Also, a number of LNG projects fell under US restrictions. They used to build terminals, but they can no longer build them. All projects have been frozen because this is a fairly high-tech industry and a large consortium of partners worked there, who left Russia and these projects sold their shares. In principle, today one company in Russia is building LNG and they have some knowledge about it, but this volume is very small. The LNG fleet is very limited, small, and today they are trying to send everything to the Asian market. According to the consulting company Windward, since the second quarter of 2023, more than 50 Russian vessels have become the property of companies from the UAE. But as experts say, Russia will not be able to repeat the practice of using the oil shadow fleet to supply LNG. The fact is that the liquefied natural gas market is much smaller. Special vessels are also few and far between, which means it will be easier to track them. Reported by Diana Kolesnik, Andrei Dmitrenko, UATV News.